Understanding the nature of one's own thoughts and how it is th through thought that emotions are created and experienced. And therefore, realizing the interpretation, we all interpret life in a different way. And through that interpretation, create our own realities that we experience, our own virtual reality. And just being willing to consider the fact that reality and how perhaps, yeah, no one has really truly unencumberedly have been in touch with it. Perhaps moments, but maybe not entirely or for extended periods. Yeah, we're all connected to it. So that's a very significant exploration. I'm now beginning to more and more become aware of, and it's simply the awareness because we are all connected to it and simply bringing awareness to what we are connected to. And understanding that helps to understand how it's thoughts, is having thoughts, because thoughts come in and then I can connect with it and go into the creation, the co-creation of the story, the dance, I go on with thoughts that lead to another thought that turns into a story, a narrative, an identity, uh, a life, uh, personalities, all the personalities that we create through our thoughts that create all the emotions, like even an anxious person, um, many deal with anxiety. I myself have dealt with massive anxiety in the past, and now I can look back and realize I believed I was an anxious person. In fact, I went to the doctors, and the doctors told me, you have social phobia and depression, and here, take these pills. So literally, being labeled as that, of course I would run with that label. And with that identity, all those thoughts, all those stories, and creating the anxious emotions, identifying with them, magnifying it, expanding it, multiplying it. And of course, that was going to floor me and completely like a tsunami of self-created intense emotions and fears just slam me regularly. And now I can realize it's thoughts. It was me and my thinking and the personality I was creating through the thinking and the identities and the stories that caused me to feel in that way. That, of course, led me to creating the life that I did, which is very um, difficult to go through. All right, an example now, right now, would be the dog barking and noticing thoughts coming in as, oh, it's disturbing this video and noticing my body having some anxious uprisings of energy all around my upper abdomen and heart. But especially I'm talking about this, recognizing that so I can hold space for my body to feel and the thoughts to, and I can actually share them through the video now. Um, so this exploration is very valuable, very significant. Perhaps one of the most significant noticings, the witness, is taking the role of the noticer, the witness, so that I can perceive and understand and simply notice what is happening. And with that noticing comes awareness. It's like planting seeds of awareness. And with awareness, then, yeah, inner wisdom, common sense, which is very perhaps one and the same, our own common sense, my common sense can start to arise and I can start to follow my own inner wisdom of recognizing what's good for me and what's not, what's right for me and what's not, and simply be able to, with greater clarity and awareness, be able to choose what's not good for me. And that may just be not letting the thoughts that come up, not letting the old patterns of reacting to those thoughts create unnecessary emotion. Now, of course, emotions will be created, but I let myself feel them. I let myself notice the thoughts 
to realize, oh, okay, it's having these thoughts like this old, these old thoughts of, oh, wanting to be perfect with videos, for example. I mean, I'm a Virgo and that's certainly one of the reasons why I chose to be a Virgo, my soul, is to work through this perfectionism and be able to hold space and hold steady through all of those triggers that cause my perfectionism to self-criticize or criticize the situation or be in resistance or judgment to the situation. So that's why self-awareness, self-knowledge, in my view, is very valuable, right? Um, I don't believe any one way is the, the answer. I believe everyone has their own answers and everyone can find their own way. And it's the finding, it's the willingness to find the exploration in the finding that allows a person to become who they want to, who they are meant to, what they're destined to, what they're fated to. Who's to say the combination of any of these? But living into their truth, being able to self-actualize, as they say. Now, of course, just these words are just concepts that we will all interpret differently. And that's another example of how we all interpret our reality differently, depending on what you have, may have heard about self-actualization, if you will. Uh, you may think of it about it in a different way. So another example of we all live in our own version of reality through our interpretation and our identification and relationship with the thoughts that we have, the personality, the identities, and the, all the emotions that's created through the stories, the thoughts, the identities, personalities. So through that understanding and awareness, simply noticing what I'm creating, how I'm feeling it in my body when I'm creating, and noticing so that next time I don't have to co-create it. It's like, you know, knowing the, the dance partner that's going to step on your toes a lot, or doesn't smell great, perhaps, or is trying to always grab your ass or hitting on you and choosing not to dance with that person next time, the next event, <laughs> the next song. So just as an example, so just the noticing. And then with critical awareness and clarity, then comes the hindsight 2020, as in being able to understand why I had those thoughts, why I built up those identities, why those fears, why those... um. Uh, attachments, right? Those patterns, those, that personality. Gosh, to realize I started developing them before I was self-conscious in my infancy, perhaps in my mom's womb, but certainly as I entered my life, the time that I chose to be born in the culture I chose to be born, um, and then developing, you know, going through all of life, and now I can look back and realize, oh goodness, because the people around me didn't have that sense of personal self-love, of freedom, perhaps they were struggling with life, perhaps the relationships was challenging. And I started to learn and mimicry and mimic and copy all of it. And 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 the combination that I created for myself is completely unique to me. Right? Just like if a family and their parents are crazy you know, traumatized or in, in challenge and suffering. If they have three kids, perhaps the three different kids will express the the traumas they'll go through through growing up in different ways. Perhaps one of them may not seem like they have trauma and become successful uh, despite of it, and they may have used it as fuel, but who knows? So this is the uniqueness of our own personal experience, just how different and unique each of our experiences. is. And so it's through the clarity and the awareness, then we can each reflect on our own lives and begin to, through the understanding, for me, the way I see it is being able to have compassion for ourselves, to forgive ourselves first and foremost, for having believed that, for having taken it on, for being, not being able to control, allowing that to enter and identifying with it and trying to hold on to it. And it was so painful that we we do anything to stop it or mitigate it, including all the crazy addictions and acting out and experimentations, etc. So self-forgiveness and then through that 
forgiveness for the situations, for the people who are doing their best to try to make themselves feel better, but may have caused me damage. And it may not necessarily be uh, ill-intentioned. They may very well have been trying to do what they knew best. And so therefore, then I can... This is the other side of the work for me, is like, let that go. Have understanding for the relationships I've been through, the experiences, the challenges, the disappointments and the heartbreaks. And then I can understand what other people may be going through and then have compassion for others and what our world is going through. And then I can, for me, then I can realize the only way to share, to, yeah, like, be, create the change, to support in the change that I want to see out in the world, for me is first and foremost, help myself, let go of the pain, of the resistance, of the judgment, create connect, reconnect to the love so I can experience the self-love that's always been there for me waiting. And But I was in the past now recognized probably so scared of being hurt due to having been hurt that I disconnected from my own love because I didn't know how to share it. And I believe we all go through that in our own way. So that's the other side of it, right? One side is the exploration of in the now moment, which is all there is, what am I creating with my thoughts, right? If I'm dealing with a particular challenging situation or person in my life that always triggers me, in that situation, pay attention. What am I creating my thoughts? And am I letting my emotions take over and identifying with it and acting through them? Or am I being willing to notice myself and allow myself to feel the feelings, to notice the stories, to not need to believe the stories or at least not like start dancing with the stories and creating more and therefore more cascades of emotion that, um, that will of course affect my behavior. Run, fight, freeze, hide. So continual exploration of what I'm creating so that I can bring just notice and through the noticing, plant awareness, expand awareness and with seeds of awareness, naturally I can notice my choice to respond rather than react and to not be in resistance. And then through that, I create greater spaciousness within myself. I have greater capacity to feel emotions as it arises and be able to let them go. And those stories start affecting less and less. And then um, clarity arises right? Spaciousness allows one's own love and inner wisdom to arise naturally, right? Through the arising of that clarity, inner wisdom, then I can reflect back on how did I create all the, the suffering that I went through? It was self-created. Now I can realize it was all self-created because I was interpreting what was taking place and in my own head creating the stories that created the emotions, that created my experience, that caused me to act in the ways that I did that may have caused a vicious cycle of self-defeat. So therefore now through that, and I can have compassion for myself, recognizing I just simply became a product of my environments, all the environments that I was a part of filled with traumatized human beings, especially for me coming from a totalitarian uh, energy and being an immigrant in Western society and trying to be myself amidst all, now we can start to really be willing to understand all the layers involved. And each of us in our own lives is unique in how we're affected by those layers, depending on who we are, of course. But now, but what affects anyone affects everyone is the way I see it, because we're all sensitive, we're all connected to each other. So therefore, I can forgive myself. And through forgiving myself, I can notice and, and be aware of how I became a product of, of my environment. And then have an understanding of why my environment is doing that. And through learning, through exploring truth, right? There's so much truth that's been coming out all these years now of what's going on, what's actually going on, right? But of course, always taking things, I don't know, with the grain of salt, don't believe anyone, 
Don't believe me when I'm telling you. Explore for yourself. See for yourself. That's my thing, right? That's one of the challenges is people believe what they see on TV. But if you're willing to like notice and look back on what you used to believe on you watch on TV, then you can realize. And if you actually if you actually study how media is created for the purposes why, you can start to see why it's created. That is there for to, well, to control minds, to influence minds, create a story, a narrative, those personalities, the personalities that they 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 instill in us so that we can rely on all the systems, right? So and through that, but through that, through understanding, I recognize my choice that I don't have to participate in the ways that I'm being conditioned to for my own to go against my own well-being and my own ability to love and being loving connection to myself. And when I'm doing that, I am in loving connection to life because I believe I am connected to life, an expression of life, just like I believe all humans are. And I believe all humans are these amazing universes of creativity and potential and connection and we all can reconnect to that connection and through that understand that, yeah, we're all in this together. So any one of us that, and those are the ones that so inspire me, willing to go on that journey of learning to be themselves. And the being for me is just being their authentic vibration of love whatever that may mean to them. And everyone is so beautifully different and unique. So I would just, and I look forward to, because I know we're headed in that direction, because that's what I choose to believe. See more and more people express their lovingness, their energy, their truth. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so um, worth it to keep exploring who you are and just experiment, just being willing to just let yourself be and just let that beingness guide you towards what you really feel good about. Yeah. So much love to you and yours and to all of us. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day.